Hey guys, welcome to another video in my options series. Today I'm going to show how to make money selling covered calls. Over the last year, the S&P 500 has returned 35%, which is pretty amazing, but my own stock portfolio with IB has returned 71% over the same time. This is primarily the result of picking high quality companies, but another contributing factor for this outperformance is option selling. I currently make about $1,200 per month selling puts and calls. So in this video, I'll explain what a covered call is, why you might want to consider using it. I'll demonstrate two option trades that made me $142. I'll go step by step so you can see exactly how I did it and discuss some of the risks involved with this strategy. Let's get started. Imagine you're currently renting, but you're thinking about buying your own place. Last year, a one-bedroom condo would have sold for $400,000. But things have gotten more expensive, and today the market value is $500,000. You feel like the price has moved up too much and too fast, and it feels like real estate is in a bubble. If you wait a while, maybe the price will fall to $450,000 and you can buy it then when it's cheaper. However, you also have to deal with the fear of missing out. What if the value goes up to $600,000 by next year and you are essentially priced out of the market? Wouldn't it be nice, though, if you had the option to wait until next year to decide to buy the property at either today's price of $500,000 or the future market price, whichever is cheaper? If the condo's value drops to $450K next year, you can just buy it for that market price. But if it goes up to $600K, then you can exercise your option and pay only $500K. This sounds like a really great deal. The only catch though is you have to pay a small fee called a premium for the privilege to lock in that $500,000 strike price. This is essentially what a call option is. The buyer of the option has the right to buy a stock at a specific strike price. If that strike price is the same as the current market price, then the option is said to be at the money. If the strike price is higher, then it's out of the money. This is how some speculators make 10 or 20 times their money in a very short amount of time. For example, they can put up just $1 and use that dollar to purchase an at-the-money call option of a stock that's trading for, let's say, $10 per share. And after a while, the stock moons to $25. So what they do is they exercise their option to buy the stock for $10, sell it in the open market for $25, and make a $15 profit from their initial $1 investment. So options allow traders to use extreme leverage without risking too much capital. What I like to do is to sell these call options to willing buyers. And because I currently have the underlying stocks, I am covered in the case that the options expire in the money and my shares get called away. So let's go over a couple of covered call examples. So one reason I might want to sell a call option on a stock is because I want to reduce my concentration risk. So for example, TD is uh, a stock that I bought last year in March, and it has gone up a lot, and now it's worth about 11% of my non-registered portfolio. I typically like to limit my concentration of any one particular stock to just 10%. So I'm going to use a call option to trim my position in TD so I don't have so much of it. And why use call option instead of just selling uh, TD and then rebalancing that way? It's because by using a call option, I could potentially sell the stock at a higher price than what it's trading at today. Um, but I might not sell it. But even if I don't sell it, I'll be happy continuing to own it because it means it hasn't gone up as much as I wanted to. Today it's at 82.45 per share. I'd be happy offloading some of my TD shares at a higher price but not lower. So that's the reason why I will use a call option to get rid of my TD shares at a higher price. And you know TD's paying a healthy 3.83% uh, dividend so I'm continuing to earn money with TD. So today is uh, September 22nd, which means my expiration date for the call option I want to set will be somewhere between October and November. That's usually a good duration that I like to go for is one to two months uh, out. So looking at the technicals, I just want to make sure that uh, it's not a bad time to sell an option. When you're selling a put option, like I described in a previous video, you want to be sort of bullish on the stock. So you want it to go up or sideways. And then when you're selling a call option, like what I want to do today, it's kind of the opposite. You don't want to be too bullish. 
Because if I think TD is going to go to like $90, $100 in the next two months, I do not want to cap my profit at $86 or $88. I'm going to go to the short term, two weeks to six weeks. That's about the uh, duration I, I want to have the option expire at. There's six bullish signals and six bearish. I'm just looking at um, the overall sentiment of where the stock might be going, technically speaking. The most recent signals are there's a neutral one and then there's a couple of bears. But overall, there's no objective tilt that TD will go down further. But if I look at the intermediate term, which is a little bit longer way out, there's three bearish signals. So that's good. If I do this for a longer period, like six weeks, eight weeks, like two months out, uh, the technicals do indicate that it is not likely TD is just going to go like up from here. It might go flat, it might go down a little bit. That's kind of what it's indicating. So this tells me it is an appropriate time to sell a call option on TD and try to get rid of it at a higher price without taking on too much risk of losing out on any gains. So I'm going to jump into Interactive Brokers. This is the Trader Workstation platform. And I'm looking at TD here on the Toronto Stock Exchange. If you're trading TD in US dollars, you want to choose the American stock. So it shows I have 531 shares of TD. That's my long position. And I can buy and sell the stock, uh, set my price, etc. This is just for the underlying. If I want to take a look at the options, I can bring up the option chain. And it basically tells me the strike price down in the middle here. On the left, you can see the C there is for call options. Everything here is for call options. Everything on the right here is for put options. So I typically sell put options, uh, but today I'm going to sell some call options. So looking at the strike price here, if I set a strike price of 84, meaning I'm OK selling TD at 84 to trim my position and rebalance, I can get somewhere between 36 cents and 41 cents uh, per contract. And each contract has 100 shares. So that means I'll be making like $36 to $41 for that. And if I go to 86, so I can sell it at a bit higher of a price, but the premium will be lower because it's less likely to hit that. So a quick way to tell if you're like in the money or really out of the money is just look at the shade of blue. As it goes out more towards like a, a larger number, it's going to go more gray, which means less likely. A, a more precise way is to look at the delta figure. So for example, at $84, there is a roughly 26% chance of it hitting that. So it's not very likely. This is looking at the October 15th expiration date. So if I go out further to November, which is 58 days away, I can see that for $84, I can get a much higher premium because it's more likely for the stock to go up over time, of course. And uh, $85, I can make this. And then $86 is 39 to 40 That's a pretty good uh, tight spread there. So I think I'm going to sell a call option at 86 for November the 19th expiration date. Looking at the delta here, there's about 17% chance it'll hit it, so not very likely. And there's enough uh, interest in this option that it can probably fill pretty quickly uh, if I set the price right. So the way to sell it is to click on the bid price, uh, which is this red number here. You don't want to click on this one because then you'll be bu uh, buying the option instead of selling it. So I will click on this. And that takes me to this uh, order entry form. So TD, the November 19th expiration, $86 call. I'm selling it. It's already picked it for me. Quantity set to one. That's fine. Uh, that just means if this option gets assigned, then I'll have to sell 100 shares at $86, which is cool because it's at $82.57 today. So if I can sell it for more than what it is today, then I'm happy with that. So for the price of the option, I want to set this to... Uh, somewhere close to the uh, upper limit here, the asking, which is 0.44. So maybe I'll do like 0.43 for now, see if it goes through. And hit submit. So it's saying if this goes through, I'll make $43 minus commission and I'll make a premium of $41. So that order has been put in. It hasn't been executed yet because nobody wants to buy it from me for 43 So I can leave it here and then throughout the day th these numbers as you can see here will, will keep changing depending on the price movement of the stock and um, the the IV and the sentiment of the option 
So I can leave it at 43 or I can like drop it down if I want to sell it more quickly. Like if I go to like 42 and 41 update, if I set it to 40, it'll probably, because it's sort of in the middle, it'll probably go. So let's see if it executes. Okay, but I'm just going to leave it at 40. So this is one reason why I want to sell an option is just to trim my position, but get a slightly higher price, or in this case, quite a bit higher than what the current market is willing to pay. And if it doesn't go through uh, on November 19th, then I'll just write another call option. And depending on the price of TD, then I can just do this sort of the same thing. So another reason why I might want to sell a call option is because a stock has a trading range and I don't think it's going to go much higher than it currently is because it's near the top of its trading range. So for example, Canadian Natural Resources, um, this is a stock that I bought in the past and I have a lot of shares of this one as well. And maybe I want to trim some position, but if you look at the long-term graph, it kind of goes down to about $26. And anytime it falls below this line, it just bounces back up pretty quickly. And then near the top end, it kind of doesn't go past $49 too much. Anytime it goes over that, it just drops back down almost right away. So this is a company that has a, historically speaking, like a predictable trading range. And right now you can see it's near the top of that. It's at $43 today. So looking at the uh, technicals of this, uh, I can see that in the short term, it's about even for bearish and bullish sentiment, but you can see how recently it's gone quite bearish because that's what all these red uh, squares are. And go a little bit longer term, there are more bearish signals than bullish signals. So again, for selling call options is what I'm trying to do. A slightly down pattern is a good sign because it means the stock is not likely to go up a lot. And even if the stock goes up a lot, I don't think it's going to hit past like 49 or 50. So uh, I'll punch that in here and I'll look at the Canadian version of this stock. You can see the IV for this stock is higher than TD. So I can probably get more premium out of this. So instead of the October strike price, I'm going to choose November. And that'll give me two months out, the same as TD. So if I look at the strike price here, if I go just one outside of the uh, dark blue, I have $49 as the strike price. But $48 is not bad as well. Like if I go back to the chart here, $48 is it's pretty high, right? It's like... It's about here, and this chart is over the last 10 years or so. so. I can probably choose a lower strike price, and it won't even hit that. Maybe something like a, a 46 or 47. So if I look at uh, 47 here, that's a pretty good premium uh, for that. 48, I can make somewhere between 52 and $58 per contract. So maybe I'll choose that. Uh, I'll choose a 52 uh, bid here, and that's going to be for the... 48 strike price. The delta is going to be uh, 0.2, so there's a 1 out of 5 chance that by the end of the uh, November 19th trade date, it's going to uh, be at $48 or higher. But I, it's it's a very low possibility, I think. So I'm going to hit uh, this bid price here. It's going to take me to the entry form. You always want to double check this just to make sure, right? So I'm selling C and Q. Uh, for the November 19th expiration date. So I would be okay selling this for $48 because it's at $43 today. So that's like an 11% premium from the current market price. And that's in two months. If it goes up 11% in the next two months, yeah, I'd, I'd be happy selling it because if it does go past 48, it's going to come down eventually and I can buy it at a cheaper price maybe through a put option, like selling a put option so I can pick it up when it comes down. For the quantity, I'm going to choose two because I have over 600 shares. I can sell 200. That's okay. And I can buy back the 200 uh, if the stock goes down. For the price, I'll set this to... F so it's between 52 and 58. I'll choose 56, slightly on the higher side. Submit. 
Okay, so now I have two orders that have not been fulfilled yet. Um, I'm going to look at the TD and see what's going on there. I'm just going to switch back to my TD86 uh, strike call. Still 38 to 43. Not really uh, moving there. And then for my C and Q, so it's gone down a little bit. It was 52, but, but now it's 51. So I'm going to change my uh, price here, maybe from 56 to 0.54. Okay, so I'm going to leave this here for now and then maybe come back to it and see later if it sells or not. If the stock market continues to go up, then chances are both of these will be filled. Order filled. Okay, so Okay, so I just had an order that's been filled. Uh that's with uh CNQ. So if I go to trades, so CNQ has been filled. Uh, at the price of 0.54. So I'm going to look at an update for TD. Uh, it looks like now the option price has gone down to 0.38 to 0.4. So this is probably not going to get filled right now, but if I set this to 0.39, maybe. I mean, if I go to 0.38, it'll definitely get filled. Order filled. Okay, so there we go. Uh, it filled at 0.38. So that is a premium of $38 minus $1.5 for a commission. So overall, I made uh, $142 today by selling these two call options. So what's going to happen now is TD is going to trade. It looks like within a certain range here. This is the one year chart. And looking out two months, it'll probably stick within this range, so not likely to go past $85. Uh, with Canadian Natural Resources, it's the same kind of deal. Uh, let's look at the Yahoo chart here. Looking at the one year chart, you know, the highest it went was $46. If I zoom out to like three years, maybe five years. So in 2018, it did go up to, it looks like $40, $49. But as soon as it did that, it just went down again. So there's a tendency for this stock to just not want to stay above, uh, let's say $46, $47 for very long. So that's why I think this is a really good stock to write call options on. So if you have a lot of shares of this stock and you see that it's near the top of the range, then I think it's a good time to sell some call options. And then if it gets assigned, wait for it to come down and then buy it back at a lower price, like 45, 46. So in most outcomes, this is going to be a profitable trade because if the stock goes down, that's no problem. As a long-term investor, I might buy more, um, but I will receive the premium in any case. If the stock goes flat, nothing will happen. I'll just continue holding it. If the stock goes up, but it doesn't go past $48, no problem. I'll continue holding it. I'll maybe sell another call option at like 50 strike price. If it goes over $48, let's say it expires at $49 or $50, my option will be assigned. And at that time, I can write a put option and try to buy it back at maybe $46 or $45 with a one month or two month expiration. And maybe that put option won't get assigned the first time, but I'll just keep writing puts. And eventually I buy back the stock at a preferably lower price than I sold it at. So if I buy it back at like $45, but I sold it at 48, then I make a profit that way. So in most situations, the outcome will be good, but there is one potential possibility that will be really bad. And that is when the stock goes up to maybe $50. And then for some reason, uh, from now until uh, the end of time, it just never goes below uh, what my put option is that I want to buy it at. So maybe it never goes back below $48 again. It just goes to $50 and then it rises up to 60, 70, 80, maybe oil price goes through the roof, who knows. So I will never be able to buy it back. So basically I would have capped my profit at $48 and I will lose out on any of the future capital appreciation of this stock of those 200 shares.
So to compensate for that unlikely but possible scenario, I've um, kept 438 shares of my position. So if the stock just shoots up and never falls back down below what I sold it at, uh, then I still have at least 438 shares to ride the wave up. So that's not too bad. This is a stock I bought last year at $15 a share. So if I can sell it at $48, then I'd be happy with that. I think at $48, it would be overpriced because when the stock gets called away, you do get, of course, the money from selling that stock. And I can put that money into other stocks that are more cheaply priced. So all that's left to do now is wait a couple of months for these options to expire, and then we'll see what happens. I'll definitely be uploading an update in November, so make sure you're subscribed if you want to catch that video as well. About a quarter of my option premiums come from selling covered calls, like I showed today, but the other three quarters come from selling put options, and I've done a whole other video on that here if you haven't seen it already. I'm still learning and refining my process as time goes on, but I hope you were able to get something out of today's video. So that's it for now, until next time.